Let's dispense with the bad news right at the top. Yesterday, I had a 10-dime best bet on the Angels as a $1.35 run line dog at home against the Minnesota Twins. And let's overstate the obvious. It is very difficult, as you know, to win a run line play when your team doesn't score any runs. And that's what happened to me yesterday as ex-Angel Irvin Santana with the Minnesota Twins returned to Anaheim and was largely responsible for the Twinkies' 3-0 win. That was the bad news. Of course, naturally, the good news especially if you happen to come to the site and watch the video report after you got over the bad news yesterday, of course, involving the uh, hellacious fighting between uh, Taylor Swift and Nicki Minaj. And no, I'm not going to go into that once more. Trust me. For you devoted followers, I don't want to bore you a second day in a row. Maybe amuse you, but we won't go there. But yesterday, naturally, won both free plays again. Yeah, that's right. For an eighth straight day, I swept the board with free plays, giving you St. Louis in a 4-3 win over Kansas City and giving you the Pirates as a run-line dog at home, getting the job done as well in their series opener against Washington. 24-2. 24-2 with the complimentary plays here over the past couple of weeks. And 8 out of 12 best bets as well. I can't complain. Yeah, would I like to go 24-2 and with the premium plays? It doesn't happen that way. But I'll tell you what, guys. It does bring up an interesting strategy, one that I've employed many, many times over the years, and one which I might have to start thinking about again. But, of course, sometimes, you know, you're too late to catch the bandwagon, even as a gambler. And what I'm talking about is this. I believe often in the power of three. And it really comes into play when you're looking at football and college football and college basketball. Little, little, little bit in baseball, never really in the NFL. And what I'm talking about is this. You handicap a card. You've got a bunch of games, a bucket of games that you really like. Well, what I do then is then I start after I get that, let's say on a college football card, I might have seven or eight games that I really like. Well, then I've got to narrow down the card. And usually I will find that I will find between two, three, four games that I really like. You know, sometimes I think it is much better Instead of trying to find that one child among your three children that you love the most, instead, just take the three plays and play them all evenly. The power of three. Because I believe that what most likely happens more often than not is you agonize in the analysis of trying to find that one play that stands out better than the other two. Well, if you have three plays that you like equally, why not play them all for equal amounts. Because, listen, I can't cite you a Stanford study or an MIT study that supports this statistically, but I can only tell you of 20 years of doing this and betting these games myself, that I feel that over the long haul, you'll more likely hit two out of three. And if you hit two out of three, yeah, the big will hurt you a little bit, but you're still gonna turn a profit. I think that happens more often than not than sitting there agonizing among the three children that which one you love the most, and inevitably, more often than not, you will find the loser among those three children. So that's why I call it the power of three. Now listen, if I had been riding the power of three streak over the past two weeks, eight out of 12 best bets, 22 out of 24 free plays, I can't tell you how much money we would have won. But again, I don't celebrate the wins. I don't lament the losses. I am certainly never going to be one that is ever going to cry over spilled milk. It's like people that don't invest in the stock market. Listen, I do not invest in the stock market. I'm just going to tell you, public disclaimer, I don't invest in the stock market. To me, it's like gambling. For every financial advisor that comes to me and says, hey, you know, this managed fund has a great five-year and 10-year performance ratio, past one year, past three years, all this crap. Hey, they're handicappers. They are no different than me. You analyze a situation, you make a judgment call, you may win, you may lose. Every financial advisor out there is a handicapper. Difference between some handicappers and most financial advisors, many of them, when they work for big companies, they simply uh, spout off the party line. XYZ company, the top head honcho, say these are the funds that you should be pushing and that's self and what you find the financial managers doing. Me? Hey, what you see is what you get. I'm handicapping the games myself. Every handicapper here at the site does the same. What we're endorsing, these are the plays we love. But again, it's just something to consider. The power of three, something that I often consider, especially when I'm in a losing streak, to be honest with you. Because then you, sometimes your vision is a little bit cloudy. Sometimes your thought process isn't laser focused. 
And again, there is a situation where I think you're better off just going ahead and playing all three games at equal amounts and looking to win two out of three. Okay, enough with that. I'll talk about the featured plays here in a moment. Listen, Charity Play of the Week won again last night for the 15th time in 21 weeks. Think about that. 21 weeks, 15 times, I've cherry-picked the handicapper here at the site and I've managed to find a guy that had a winning play for you, and you've gotten that play for free. So now, quid pro quo time, it's time for you to make a donation, and courtesy of Jeff Benton, who last week you got his All-Star Game winner for free, and last night you got Milwaukee and Arizona for free, I'm asking you to make a donation. And many times in the four-year history of this program that I created, I like to return to the stories of past recipients, because often what happens is, these uh, campaigns get a lot of publicity thanks to what I'm doing. They get a ton of donations and then the donations just dry up. It's not like the people's financial crisis has disappeared. So late in May, I told you about a uh, story, uh, a little four-year-old uh, by the name of Mac who was diagnosed with cancer when he was just 18 months old. Uh, has been in remission since March of 2013, but he has a couple of genetic diseases that predispose him to the cancer returning. Well, new medical issues have prompted tests being ordered. He goes uh, undergoes scans every four months to see if the cancer has returned. He was recently diagnosed with a, uh, uh, something called hypermobility joint syndrome, which requires physical therapy. And all these tests and all these exams require his family to make constant trips to Vanderbilt University in Nashville. Uh, the father recently had a couple months ago had his hours reduced, so the family is looking for some help with the financial expenses incurred from the traveling, etc. And he's not their only child. So you open up your wallets and make donations back at the end of May, and I'm asking you to do so again. You can click on the link if you happen to be watching the video report here on the website, and you can make a donation, PayPal, Visa, MasterCard, etc. Again, I don't care if you devote, donate, don Jesus, I can't even say the word. Uh, donate $5 or $50. All I care about is if you participate in the program because, again, the most recent run, 15 of the last 21 weeks, you've gotten a winner absolutely free. Now, in terms of the featured plays here, Scott Delaney, unfortunately, I took him down yesterday. He was going for a third straight 100 dime max wager underdog winner in three days. He was on the Angels unbeknownst to me. So, Scott, my apologies because you and I were so tight. We're such close friends. I took you down yesterday because unbeknownst to me, as I said, I had the Angels as well. But still, I mean, not a bad run. $10 betters have made over $7,900 following his plays the past nine weeks. And, uh, you know, those 100 dime plays are still 81, 57, and 2 over the past four years. Brad Wilton. Uh, today, going for winning day number 15 out of 20, $10 bettors have won over five grand the past 19 days. Biggest release of the season, 100 Dime Interleague Game of the Year, Oakland and San Francisco. It is the half price play of the day, and it matches Wednesday's 100 Dime winner with the Yankees over the O's. If you also got at a huge discounted price, you get it today for half price by using coupon code 100 Dimer, 100 D I M E R. Other promos from Gabriel DuPont, who has another 80 dime play, his second biggest of the season. In fact, 80 dime winner number eight out of 10. You can save $60 on that play from a guy who has made $10 betters over. $10,500 since the middle of April, over $16,000 this year, over twenty-three dollars since Thanksgiving. And also, as you know, when the charity play wins, I then give you the ability to save even more because I believe in bribery. I believe if I give you a bigger discount, you'll make even a bigger donation. So you can save $125 off the purchase price of any handicapper's 30-day package today simply by using coupon code SAVE125, S-A-V-E-125. Remember, if you happen to be involved in a long-term package with, for example, let's say Trace Adams and you have 10 days left. You want to buy another 30-day package. Well, you'll then have 30 plus 10, 40 days left. You'll save the $125, and if you have an instant rebate, that is applicable as well. So save 125, S-A-V-E 125, and that'll save you $125 off the purchase of any handicapper's 30-day purchase uh, package price. Or you can save $50 off the purchase of any seven-day handicappers package by using coupon code SAVE50. If you have ever have any questions uh, how the coupons work, just contact customer service. That's what they are there for. Guys, I'm going to come back with the St. Louis Cardinals this time on the run line tonight as a $1.15 home dog after backing St. Louis last night as my first complimentary play. Tim Cooney going uh, for the Cardinals 
3.21 earned run average and three home starts over 14 innings. Not that he's been a stellar performer in those 14 innings, as he's allowed 14 hits and walked seven batters. Listen, he's pretty much a five-inning pitcher right now, okay? That's what he is. But this is more about the Cardinals, who have won uh, five of their last seven at home against the Braves, who have beat Kansas City in a makeup game last night 4-3, to three, who are 34-12 and 12 at home this season, and it's all about going against the Braves, a team that is also just as offensively challenged as the Cardinals. They've lost five in a row on the road, scoring just 16 runs in that stretch. They're three and 10 in their last two road trips, and they're three and eight in their last 11 games overall, averaging just three runs a game. So, you know, I'm gonna hope and pray and keep my fingers crossed that St. Louis pulls off a 3-1 or 4-2 win tonight. Uh, in this one. The other complimentary play tonight, listen, it is not a very good card. This will probably surprise you, but just because Max Scherzer pitched a no-hitter and came within one out, a controversial one out, remember Jose Tabata getting hit on the elbow with two outs in the ninth inning, coming within one out of that perfect game in his last appearance at PNC Park, I still like Pittsburgh here tonight. Plus the dollar twenty is the home dog to beat the Nationals, who have not exactly been setting the baseball war, uh, world on fire with their offensive exploits, who are not exactly a great road team either. Pirates won last night's opener, uh, seven to three, behind Francisco Liriano. They have uh, won nine of their last ten at home. You know. Interesting with the Pirates, another team that has been very streaky this season. Uh, prior to the All-Star break, they won 13 out of 16. Then they go on the road, they lose 5 out of 6, and they come back home. They beat the hell out of the Nationals last night. Go figure. Jeff Locke, a guy who I've talked about many times this season. You always have to look at his home road splits. You know, on the road, this guy has been dreadful. Matter of fact, just went against him. Uh, with a free pick in his last start. I believe it was against Milwaukee over the weekend. He's got a 6.57 earn run average on the road, but at home, 2.58. I mean, amazing. Almost a four-run difference. Um, so again, I'm going to go with uh, the Pirates and Jeff Locke as the uh, road dog in this one. Listen, the Nationals have only given Max Scherzer four runs of support in his last four starts. And he is another one of those pitchers, much like Zach Greinke, much like uh, Cole Hamels, much like um, Corey Kluber of the Indians. Guys that just don't get any run support. Then there's other guys that aren't nearly as good pitching-wise, right? Guys like... Um, who, who would I want to say? Drew Hutchinson, let's say, of the Toronto Blue Jays. Who it seems like every time he takes to the mound, he gets seven runs of support. Annabelle Sanchez of the Tigers. Every time he takes to the mound, the Tigers seemingly score at least five runs here over the past two months. It's always been that way with baseball. No rhyme or reason. It's just one of those things. And Max Scherzer is one of those guys who just doesn't get a lot of run support for the Nationals. So I'm going to go once again uh, with uh, Pittsburgh here as the home dog. Oh, by the way, I may have misspoke. You know, Scherzer actually has a 5.85 earned run average in his last three starts at PNC Park. That near perfect game was actually at home in Washington. So if I said that backwards earlier, my mistake. It's not like I have a teleprompter here in front of me and all my notes popping up. This is up here. So that'll do it. Best of luck to you guys. And remember the free plays for tonight. Uh, Cardinals on the run line, and Pittsburgh as a home dog. That'll do it. Please make a donation to the charity play, and I'll talk to you again tomorrow when we do this one more time.